Hello everyone, and welcome to this video on section 7.3 called Polar Coordinates. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through a preview version of a Newton-Alta assignment on section 7.3. And in this video, you know, please understand that the questions I see may not be exactly the same as the questions that you see when you work on the assignment yourself, but I'm hoping that the, they are similar enough so that watching me do them here will help you out when you work on the assignment on your own. All right, so here's our Newton Alta page. At the upper left corner, the title of the assignment, you won't have the word preview. Upper right hand corner, have your mastery bar, which shows you how far along you've gotten. Next to that, the activity log, which shows you how far you've gotten in each objective. So there are two main objectives and five, you know, sub objectives here. And on the main page, you have your current objective, and below that a question related to that objective. And at the bottom of every question, you should be seeing a feedback button. So if you see any issues, you know, maybe typographical errors, or just problems in general with the questions or the answer explanations, you can send feedback directly to Newton, and hopefully someone from their support staff will get back to you shortly and help you fix your, resolve your issue. You will not have this instructor cheat button. All right, this is for instructors only. But you will have a more instruction button. All right, so if you're ever struggling with a topic or a particular question, click on this More Instruction button. It'll take you to a page with further reading to do or videos to watch or both. And then it'll give you questions related to that instruction that you can work on while the instruction is still up and available to refer to. And hopefully it makes it easier to get through the assignment that way. All right, so the first objective I'm seeing is locate points in a plane by using polar coordinates. All right, so first off, I want to go into what are polar coordinates? All right, start writing that stuff up. So polar coordinate. Every time you see the word coordinates, this means you're going to be describing to someone how to get to a certain location on the plane, or in three dimensions or four dimensions. But we're going to be sticking with uh, the XY plane or the two-dimensional plane. Now. I said x, y. Those x, y coordinates, I'll do a little recall here first. Uh, when you're given coordinates, an x coordinate and a y coordinate, and you know that means you, know, you have a y axis, an x axis. Remember these coordinates tell you how to get from the point zero, zero, how to get from the origin to any point on the plane. I go to the right or left, you know, X units, and then I go up or down, a little perpendicular here, go up or down Y units, and that takes me to the location. 
right, right here. All right, and this would have coordinates x, you know, comma y. Now, if I went right or left x, up or down y, I get that part of the picture. But I, I could also have gone up or down y, and then right or left x. All right, and it forms another 90 degree angle. And maybe you can see now why they call these rectangular coordinates. So the x, y coordinates are called rectangular coordinates. Um, also referred to in this text, and you'll see in this assignment, and we also saw this in sections, you know, seven one. Well, just section seven one. These rectangular coordinates, right, with just x and y represented, also referred to as Cartesian uh, coordinates, right? We're on the Cartesian x y plane. Now, polar coordinates. All right, the new coordinates that you're introduced to here. It's still an ordered pair that you're going to be given. And it still describes how to get to a certain location on the plane, but just in a totally different fashion. So instead of x and y, they'll be giving you a value for r and theta. R, and then that, that Greek letter theta. Now, in polar, you only have a horizontal axis, a number line, a horizontal number line. With, you know, it's just, and it's a number line, so you got zero in the middle, and positive numbers to the right, negative numbers to the left, and so on. This number line represents possible values of R. And this is called the polar axis. I've also heard it called the radial axis because what we're going to see here is that R represents you know, a radius of a circle. So what you do with these coordinates, now uh, also quite often, along with the uh, polar axis, right, this horizontal line, you'll also see a vertical line drawn just because people are so used to, you know, the x, y plane. This line isn't really called anything. Um, I mean, I guess later when we see polar equations and polar curves, this line will be uh, the, the, the line theta equals pi over 2. But I'm not really going to call this vertical axis anything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to you know, write this vertical axis in just to give me you know every quadrant, tell me how, how far is it to every 90 degrees, every pi over 2 radians. All right, so here's how you travel when you're given an r and a theta. So whatever the value of r is, you go from from this point here. Now this this point here in polar coordinates where the where the r where r is zero on the horizontal number line, this is called the pole. Right, not the origin, right? Back up here in rectangular coordinates, that was that was the origin. Now it's called the pole, just to differentiate between the two. Alright, so you take this value of R and you go right or left on the number line, you know, till you reach R on the number line. Right. So I go to this value of R on the on the number line. And then instead of traveling on a rectangle, like we did with the x, y coordinates, what we're doing 
is traveling on a circle. So R, R, negative R, negative R. We're traveling on a circle with that radius. So here's a, this is not the point, sorry. This is just the circle with that radius. So sometimes you could refer to polar coordinates as circular coordinates. As you're traveling on a circle. So I go to the value of r on the horizontal axis. And then from that point where r is, I travel on the circle until we sweep out a central angle. So here from R, say I travel this way on the circle until I reach, until I reach this point here, this location. And what, what I've just done is swept out an angle, a central angle of theta radians or theta degrees, if you're in degrees. And I want to refresh your memory too for maybe a trig class you've taken a while back. Remember, if theta, if theta is positive, if theta is positive, a positive angle given to you, that means you're traveling counterclockwise. All right, like I did here, All right, going around like this. If theta is a negative number, right? Remember, negative angles are measured clockwise. So if I had theta negative, you know, I'd go to whatever value of r and then go clockwise, right? Go this way. Okay, so I'm going to do. I'm going to show you on Desmos right now how we can look at polar points. So I'm going to that Desmos.com. Now, right now, I have a rectangular grid set up. You can go here to the settings and you see the grid. You can change it from rectangular you know, where everything's rectangular and stuff, I grid a left, right, up, down grid to a polar grid where everything is circular. See all these circles here, and they label a lot of special angles going around the circle, you know, 0, pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2, and so on. All right. Oh, yeah, so, um, I guess before I get to actually plotting points, we need to talk about the relationship between polar coordinates and rectangular coordinates. All right, so I'm going to go back. I'll come back to Desmos in a second. All right, so now let's talk about the relationship between these. And of course, we'll get to examples with plotting. They'll give me R's and thetas. We'll, we'll see examples with numbers in the homework problems. All right, so I'm going to wait, wait for those examples. So now if you were to draw, you know, your x, y axes or your r, your polar axis, right? This horizontal number line could be thought of as the x axis or the polar axis, the r axis. And then the vertical line, the vertical axis is the y axis. So again, if I give you a point in rectangular coordinates, means you're going from the origin here, right? I'm going to draw a very similar picture to before, out to some value, right? X, X units left or right, and then Y units up or down. Right, so creating a nice right right angle here, and Y units above, and there there's my point in rectangular. Now, if you're getting to the same point in polar, I need to know what circle 
that point is on. So what's the radius? So that would be the this distance here to the point that would be r. Right? I'm traveling on this circle with a radius of r. Right, I'm just going to do let's do half the circle here. Here's you know opposite of r r up here. Yeah, this point should be you know whatever r is r away from from the pole right from the origin and then of course if i go to r and then travel on the circle that creates you know sweeps out an angle of theta right so there's your theta and then hopefully you can see in my picture here this right triangle right So remember, in a right triangle, we got all sorts of nice stuff going on. I can apply the Pythagorean theorem. You know, if I know x and y, we can find r and theta. So suppose we know x and y. Well, then we can use the following relationships to find r and theta. You know, if I want to find r, that's the hypotenuse of this right triangle. We use the relationship x squared plus y squared equals r squared. I'll say use. So if we know x and y, the rectangular coordinates, and we want to find the polar coordinates, we use these relationships x squared plus y squared equals r squared, and you know, solve for r. And r could be positive or negative, so you're going to see two possibilities coming out of this. Now, if I knew x and y only, and I wanted theta, well, y is the opposite length in this hypot in this triangle. x is the adjacent length. So I could use the tangent of theta to help me find theta. So the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, right? opposite over adjacent, y over x. Right, and I know y and x. I could plug these in. And then I do inverse tangent, or you know, you use you use you solve that equation for theta. So those are relationships that are nice when I know x and y, and I want to solve for r and theta. Now the other way around is if I know right, if the known values are my r and theta, right? If if the polar coordinates are known. And I want to find the rectangular coordinates. So we're going to use the following. If I know theta and r, and I, I don't know x. Well, again, x is the adjacent side to theta. r is the hypotenuse. So I would use cosine. The cosine of theta would be x over r. And then multiplying by r gives me this. So the x-coordinate in rectangular is r times the cosine of theta. That's my r-coordinate in polar times the cosine of my theta-coordinate in polar. That'll give me the x-coordinate in rectangular. And then very similarly, I know theta, I know r, but I say I, I want to find y. Well, that's the opposite side, and I know the hypotenuse. So I'll use the sine, right? The sine of theta would be y over r, and then multiplying by r would give me this for y. y equals r times the sine of theta. So it's, it's these relationships I'm going to keep bouncing, bouncing around with in this video. All right, so I'm going to use this information here to because when you plot just individual points in Desmos, they plot the rectangular. So I'm going to write up the a version with r something times cosine of something and something times the sine of something for my x coordinate and y coordinate. That way we can actually see some polar stuff coming up. I'll show you what I mean here in Desmos. All right, so so back to Desmos. So here's how you can plot polar points, uh, points with polar coordinates. Um, so in parentheses, right, I'm, I'm making an ordered pair here. I'll go r 
for the x coordinate, we said x was r cosine theta. So I'll go r cosine. Now be careful with this though. If I put theta in in Desmos, you know, theta is a special thing. Um, if I do r cosine theta for the x and r sine theta for the uh, for the y, see nothing really happens. And look off here, too many variables, blah blah blah. Okay. That's not really the reason it's not plotting it. It's because when they see theta, it's assumed you're plotting polar curves. So instead of theta, I'll use another letter, just a simple letter like A. Don't use T. Okay, if I use T, uh, that's what we used for parametric equations, parametric curves. Um, you saw that in sections you know, 7, 1, 7, 2 videos. So let's use a, and then r uh, sine a, you know, so a is replacing theta here. All right. And then you see now I can add sliders for r and a, and see how it takes me to a point. There's a point plotted here. I'll label it. Now, when you label it, that's the, those are the rectangular coordinates, x and y. All right. So I'm going to get rid of those, actually. Um, so you see how we're traveling on a circle. Now I'll I'll hit play in a little bit here. Um, you know, let me change to degrees actually. Make sure let's do degree mode. All right, so now you see all the stuff is in degrees, you know, 150 degrees, 180 degrees, and so on. So A, right, this A inside the cosine, A inside the sine. I do that in degrees. So my slider for A, I'm going to go 0 to 360. And I'm going to have it go every 15 degrees, right? And the value of R is, you know, the value of the radius. Now, again, R can be positive. R can also be negative, right? All right, so look, here's, here's when r equals 1. I'm one unit away from the pole. I'm on this circle with a radius of 1. And a is 0, so I've done you know 0 degrees. I'm not moving at all. But when r is negative 1, see, it just moves into the other side of the pole. I'm on the negative 1 value on the horizontal axis. Right? But you're still on a circle with a radius of 1. Right, radius of 1, radius of negative 1 mean the same thing in polar. You're on the same circle. And then A is again 0, the, the angle. A, I guess I could say A for angle. The angle is 0. So 0 degrees, I'm not moving. You, know, the, you don't move on the circle, 0 degrees. So now look at what happens. I'll let this play slowly. Look what happens when I start playing this. You know, 0 degrees, 15 degrees, 30, 45, and you see how it's moving around this circle counterclockwise, right, because these are positive angle measures. But I'm moving around this circle with a radius of 1 counterclockwise, right, until I, you know, get to A equals 360, where you're back at the beginning, and then it goes backwards. You know, as soon as you start decreasing angles, you move clockwise. All right, and I could let me pause this. Let me actually start from, say, negative 360 to positive 360. Let's start with that. Okay, so watch this, right? When the angle, the negative angle, again, here, you know, radius negative 1, angle's negative 360. So if I move, you know, clockwise 360, that's back to the beginning, or clockwise 2 pi radians, back to the beginning here. When I hit play now, see all the angles will be negative. So but um when I increase angles, all right, so you're gonna see the angle increase when I hit play. When angles increase, you're going uh counterclockwise. When angles decrease, you're going clockwise. So you see it's going counterclockwise as the angle increases. Now 
going around this circle. And then eventually it'll get back to 360 here. And then, and then as angles decrease, you go clockwise. All right. And I want to wait till it gets to it. I'll just go to a negative angle here. So see it like now, again, the negative angle stuff, if I just had a fixed angle, so like here, R is negative one. So I go to negative one on the R axis. And then from here, all right, where my cursor's floating around, from negative one on the R axis, negative 120 means go clockwise, right? So from here, go clockwise 120 degrees, and that takes me to this point, right? And then again, you can change the radius up, which it takes you to the opposite side. Now here's a, here's a radius of three. Now I'm on this circle with a radius of three. And if I went to three on the horizontal axis, going negative 120, you know, means go clockwise 120, and I'm here. Right. Yeah, so that's just, just wanted to demonstrate how to plot polar points and move them around on this polar grid in Desmos. All right, well, anyway, back here, back here. So I know I had degrees there, so it was easier to look at, but but for the most part, we're going to be working in radians. So finally, to the first question here. What are the polar coordinates of the point shown in the graph below? And answer with the standard polar coordinates, where r is positive and theta is, you know, between 0 and 2 pi. As you saw in the graph a second ago, you know, you can have a negative value of r, and the angle can be anything, you know, 0 to 2 pi, negative 2 pi to 0. You can just keep adding 2 pi, subtracting 2 pi, and you're back at the same location. And you could also, you know, make the value of r negative and then just add pi, and you're back at the same location, right? There's So you'll notice that there, for any location, there are infinitely many polar coordinates to get you to that location. So that's why they're having us do the standard, right, the standard polar coordinates here, where we have a positive value of r and a value of theta from 0 to 2 pi, including 0. All right, so if you look at this picture here, yeah, very tiny, but See, it's got the polar grid up, and look at this circle that this point is on. It's on a, it's on this circle with a radius of two, right? It's on this circle with a radius of two, a distance of two from the from the pole. So that's going to be the first coordinate, two. That's the r value, two, comma, and then if I go to two, right? If I go to two on the on the on the r axis, the horizontal axis here. If I want to go to that point using you know an angle from zero to two pi, so a counterclockwise positive angle, I would have to go you know pi over two, and you can see it here. I'd have to go to two on the r axis, and then travel on this circle you know so that we get a angle of pi over two radians, and I will land at this point. So 2 for the r value, and then pi over 2 for the theta value. All right, so that point there they're highlighting has r2 theta pi over 2. And then after you submit an answer, right, you'll be told if you're right or you're wrong. And then you'll be given some sort of answer explanation. All right, read through these, please. If you're right... Just make sure you got it right for the right reasons and that you didn't just get lucky or guess correctly. And maybe they do something in the answer explanation that you like better and you might want to try for future problems that are similar. And definitely read through it if you got it wrong. All right, you want to figure out why you got something wrong and hopefully you can learn from your mistakes for future questions. All right, so moving on. All right, so here's where, remember I had those relationships written up on my pages earlier. When you know polar coordinates and how do you convert to the rectangular, right? How do you convert to the xy and vice versa, right? When you know the rectangular coordinates xy, then you give me the same, pol you know, the same location in polar. 
All right, so here, given the point you know, 1, 2 in rectangular coordinates, find the polar coordinates of the point where r is positive and theta is, you know, between 0 and 2 pi, from 0 to 2 pi. And round your answer to two decimal places if necessary. So I may have to use some sort of calculator thing. But yeah, I'm going to draw a picture of this. Right. So they have given us rectangular coordinates first, right? So they have given us, you know, the x, y coordinates. And those are 1, 2. So I will point out that location here. So, you know, 1 on the x-axis, 2 on the y-axis, and that is, you know, again, this location right here. So there's the point 1, 2 in rectangular, all right? And I'll put R-E-C-T for rectangular above that point. Now, if I want polar, remember polar, this horizontal axis now I'm going to think of as my R axis. Polar, I need to know the radius of the circle that this point is on. Right? Again, we're on some circle with the radius of R. Traveling, oh, this is a nice little arc of a circle here. So I want to know this, again, they want a positive value for R. So what's this value over here? And then also a positive, you know, I would be traveling from here, a positive angle. So going counterclockwise, sweeping out this angle theta to get to that point. Well, we saw earlier, right, the little right triangle. I can make a little right triangle here where the, this leg has a length of one, this leg has a length of two. And we saw that, you know, I'll write the relationship of, again, x squared plus y squared should be equal to r squared. All right, r squared. And I can find r. Well, the x coordinate was 1, so 1 squared. The y coordinate is 2, right? So 2 squared equals r squared. That's 1 plus 4. So we get 5 equals r squared. So the radius could be positive square root of 5 or negative square root of 5, but they asked us for the positive one. Right? So this is the square root of 5 here. This, this circle I'm traveling on has a radius of square root of 5. All right now, go out to square root of 5 on this horizontal axis and then travel in a counterclockwise direction until I reach that point on that circle. Now remember to find theta. I'm using this relationship, right? The tangent of theta is the you know, y coordinate over the x coordinate, opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of this angle is, you know, 2 over 1. So just 2. And then to find theta, I'll do, you know, now 2 is not a nice number. It's not like the square root of 3 or square root of 3 over 3 or 1 or 0. Take the inverse tangent. Now, you got to be careful, though. All right, when I do the inverse tangent of 2, all right, the inverse tangent of a positive number, remember, this is just an angle from, from 0 and pi over 2. So that'll take care of this picture. I mean, this, this angle here is definitely between 0 and pi over 2, right? Pi over 2 would take me to the positive y-axis. So this should be good, right? The inverse tangent of 2 is fine. It's just that if I was in, like, the second quadrant, that wouldn't be big enough. I would have to do pi minus that. Um, if I was in the third quadrant, I'd have to add pi. If I was in the fourth quadrant, I'd have to do the opposite of it, right? So you got to pay attention to what quadrant you're in after you do this inverse tangent to determine how to get to the point.
Now, of course, they asked us to, you know, round these to two decimal places. All right, so I'm going to go back to radian mode, by the way. All right. Um, so back in Desmos, I'm going to go back, back to radians. All right, and let's, let's change this A up from 0 to 2 pi now. So this is from earlier, right, when I was plotting points. And then have the steps be, uh, let's say, every every pi over 12, right? That's 15 degrees. So we said the radius was, you know, the square root of 5. Square root of 5. And our angle was the inverse tangent. of uh, 2. So look, there's the angle in radians, 1.107. You see how that takes me to this location here? And look, when I label it, again, when you label things, it's going to give you the xy coordinate, which is 1, 2. Exactly what they told me. All right, this is one. If I put up the rectangular grid, see it's at the point 1, right, 2 up. But on the on the polar grid, it's on this circle with a radius of two, or sorry, radius of square root of five, right? And then uh, so that's a little bit bigger than two. And then you see how it's a little more than two units away from the origin here from the pole. And then I'm on this. I go to square root of five, and then I travel 1.107 radians, you know, inverse tangent of two radians, and I'm I'm here at the point one two in rectangular. All right, so that's the approximation. For uh, inverse tangent of two. Now the square root of five is two point two three six, so two point two four. And I'm going one point one one for the angle. So the radius of the circle, two point two four, and then the angle, the theta. 1.11. So again, R coordinate first, 2.24, and then theta coordinate, the angle second, 1.11, rounded to two decimal places. Wonderful. All right, and again, the, all the same relationships brought up here. All right, now this is the other way around, where I am given a, a point in polar coordinate C, right? So this is R comma theta. This is a radius and an angle. We're asked to find the rectangular coordinates of the point. Enter an exact answer. Right? So this time they don't want decimals. Now, if I go to Desmos, you know, the value of R was 8, and the value of A, right, again, A for angle, I'm not using theta here, was negative 5 pi over 4. All right, now i got to zoom out because we, we only see up to a radius of 5 here. There it is. Now, you see the, there's on a circle of radius 8, centered at the pole, and if I went to, you know, 8, on the R axis, if I go to eight here, and then go an angle of negative five pi over four. So that's clockwise, so that's, you know, pi and then another pi over four, I'm here. Right. Now I have it labeled, again, when you label things in Desmos, it's labeling them with the X, Y coordinates. These are, these are the rectangular coordinates, negative 5.657, for the x coordinate and positive 5.657 for the y coordinate. And again, remember the relationships I wrote up earlier. When you know r and theta, so again, I'll draw, you know, we're given r theta is 8 negative 5 pi over 4, right? Or negative uh, 225 degrees. 
if you're in degrees. Now if I'm drawing that, and this is the r-axis, and I'm going to a radius of 8 over here, going to r equals 8, and then we are traveling on this, I'll put up the other 8s, 8, eight you know, negative 8, negative 8, whatever. We're traveling on this circle now with a radius of 8. Alright. So I go to 8, go here, and then from here, travel on the circle clockwise, right? It's a negative angle, so I'm going clockwise. I'm going this way until I sweep out an angle of 5 pi over 4, negative 5 pi over 4. So again, this is clockwise, and that's pi, or 4 pi over 4, and then another pi over 4, another 45 degrees, right? So here's your negative 5 pi over 4, and I am landing at this point here. So there's the point, you know, 8 comma negative 5 pi over 4, and that's in polar. I'll put P-O-L for polar. Now what, what they want, right, again, what they want are the x and y coordinates. You know, what's, what's, what's the y coordinate here? What's the x coordinate? So remember the relationships I put up earlier. The x coordinate is going to be r cosine theta, and the y coordinate is r sine theta. All right, and this is plug these in and, and simplify. So remember the value of r, our, our r coordinate is 8 times the cosine of negative 5 pi over 4. All right, the theta is negative 5 pi over 4. So the x coordinate is 8 times, and then the cosine of negative 5 pi over 4 was negative square root of 2 over 2. So this is negative 4 times the square root of 2 for the x-coordinate. And very similarly for the y-coordinate, that'd be 8 times the sine of negative 5 pi over 4, which is 8 times, you know, positive square root of 2 over 2. So positive 4 root 2. So this is negative 4 root 2 for the x-coordinate, positive 4 root 2 for the y-coordinate. And that's what I'm going to type in. Now, of course, when you plug those in, you know, negative 4 root 2 is negative 5.657 something. Rounded to three decimal places. And then, you know, positive 4 root 2 is, you know, positive 5.657 rounded to three decimal places. Uh, but they don't want us to round here, right? They're just asking for exact, right, exact answers. So that means, you know, no calculator, no rounding. So the x-coordinate in rectangular, right, negative 4 times the square root of 2. y-coordinate, positive 4 times the square root of 2. And that should be good. Great. And again, x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. Wonderful. All right, so this is locate points in the plane again. So this they're having you drag a point around, All right? So I, I move, I can move this point around here. So here three. So I'm going to go to three on the three on the horizontal axis, right? Three units away from the um, pole, and then from that point. The angle is negative pi over 4. So I'm going to travel on this circle with a radius of 3. I'm going clockwise pi over 4. Right? It's negative pi over 4, so I'm going clockwise 45 degrees. So that would be here. 3, and then pi over 4 clockwise, right? negative pi over 4. So I'm at this location, and that's it. That's all they asked us for was plot that point in the polar plane on the polar grid here. Great. All right. So once again, going converting back and forth. So here we have, you know, the point negative two five. 
is in rectangular, that's xy. Find r and theta, and they want the standard where r is positive and theta is between, you know, from 0 to 2 pi. So once again, I'll draw a picture with this point, this location on it. And we got those same relationships coming up where, you know, x squared plus y squared is r squared, and tangent of theta is y over x. I'm going to use those again. All right, so we're given x, y, we're given rectangular coordinates of 2, uh, negative 2, 5, right? Yeah, negative 2, 5. All right, so this time I'm in you know, negative 2, 5. I'm in quadrant 2. All right, this location here. Again, what I want is what's the radius of, what's this r, right? What's the radius of the circle I'm on? So the value of r in the horizontal axis here. And then from here, I want to go counterclockwise, right? They want an angle that's between 0 and 2 pi, so some counterclockwise angle to take me to that same location. So again, the relationships to help you find these is, you know, x squared plus y squared is going to be r squared. So that's negative 2 you know, squared will be positive 4 plus 5 squared equals r squared. 4 plus 25 is 29. So r could be, you know, positive square root of 29. But I could also have started over here at negative, but they wanted the positive, you know, negative square root of 29 as well. But they want this one, right? So this is the square root of 29. And they do have us round that to two decimal places, but so I'll punch that in later. And then to find theta, remember we're using this relationship, the tangent of theta is y divided by x. So the tangent of theta is negative 5 halves. Uh, it's 5 over negative 2, y divided by x. Now when I put in theta, when I do inverse tangent here, inverse tangent of negative 5 halves, Remember, when you take the, again, you hopefully you got to go back to your trig stuff. It might have been a while, but remember, when you take the inverse tangent of a negative number, this is an angle from negative pi over 2 to 0. So that's a negative angle. This is actually a negative angle, and that would be in the same line. All right, it'll be, it'll have the same reference angle as the angle we want. So here is the inverse tangent of negative 5 halves. Right? It's going to be a negative angle that's on the same, that ends on the same line as our point. So that's no good. I can't just use this. What I need to do now is to get from this angle to that one, you know, from this part. You know, I'm, at, I'm actually at this point down here. To get from this point, to that point, I just need to, you know, add pi, right? Remember, adding pi radians takes you to the other side of the circle, the other side of the diameter, halfway across. All right, so we need theta here. We need to take this inverse tangent of negative 5 halves here, and to get to quadrant 2, the point in question, we need to also add pi. And I'll show you that on the calculator as well. All right, one. All right, so back here. So we got this. Uh, so now the radius is the square root of 29. And the value of a, all right, now see what happens when I put in just inverse tangent. The angle is inverse tangent of negative 2 and a half, negative 5 halves. See how that's in quadrant 4? And you see how the coordinates are not correct? It's positive 2, negative 5, not negative 2, positive 5. So I need to be on the other side of the circle, right? So that means I need to add pi, and then you see how it takes me to the other side of the circle, 
and I've got the correct coordinates, negative 2, comma 5 here for the, for the rectangular. And so you've got to be careful when you do this inverse tangent. Right? Just pay attention to what quadrant your point is in, because you may have to add pi or subtract pi or whatever um, to get over there. Right? And of course, this 1.95, that's between 0 and 2 pi, right? They wanted an angle from 0 to 2 pi. That's why I added pi instead of subtracting pi, right? Because subtracting pi would also take you to the other side of the circle. And then the square root of 29, right, rounded to two decimal places, is 5.39. So 5.39 for the radius, 1.95 for the angle, the theta. So 5.39 and 1.95, that should be good. Wonderful. So again, they mentioned the whole A add pi to be in the correct, correct quadrant here. All right, so once again, we're converting. All right now this time we saw an example like this before. We're given an, an, a point in polar negative 3 for the r, negative 7 pi over 6 for the theta. So again, I'll draw a picture of this. You know, where would this be located? And we'll also look at it in Desmos. And then they want the rectangular coordinates, right? The x and y coordinates. All right, so we're given r and theta. So this time r is, you know, a negative value, negative 3. And theta is, you know, negative 7 pi over 6. So again, a negative angle here means I'm going clockwise from the value of r. So here's this r axis. But this time I'm going to r equals, you know, negative 3. Starting from here. Starting from that, that point. Right, and we're traveling on this circle with a radius of 3. Right, here's a circle with a radius of 3. Now from this point, again, from negative 3 now on R, I sweep out an angle. I travel on this circle. I travel clockwise 7 pi over 6. So from here, clockwise, right, this way. Now 7 pi over 6, you know, Halfway around is 6 pi over 6, that's pi, and then I need to go another pi over 6, another 30 degrees, and I'm here in quadrant 4. And this is in quadrant 4. So I should have a positive x coordinate and a negative y coordinate, but yeah, here's, a, here's theta, right, clockwise. From here, though, right, from the negative side, from negative 3. So there's my location. Again, they want what's the x coordinate, uh, what's the y coordinate in rectangular. And it's that same relationship we put up before. In x, the x coordinate is r cosine theta. And the y coordinate is r sine theta. Now the value of r is negative 3. And then times the cosine of, you know, negative 7 pi over 6. Now you can't think about being here for cosine, right? Ignore that for now. Think back to your unit circle. Remember the cosine of negative 7 pi over 6, you'd be in quadrant 2. And the cosine of negative 7 pi over 6 would be, um, you know, positive or sorry, negative square root of 3 over 2. So that would be negative 3 times, you know, negative square root of 3 over 2. So this will be a positive value, as we see in our point here, our picture, has a positive x coordinate, a positive 3 root 3 over 2, whatever that value is. So that's the x coordinate, 3 root 3 over 2. And then the y coordinate should be negative, right? Y equals the value of r is negative 3. And then think back to you know, the unit circle. The sine of negative 7 pi over 6 was positive half. So this would be negative 3 times a half, or negative 3 halves, negative 1.5 for the y coordinate. 
and you see it is a negative coordinate here. And there we go. There's the x coordinate, there's the y coordinate, that's what I'm typing in. Now let's just verify that all this stuff works out in Desmos. So again, the value of r, negative 3. And the value of the angle a, right, what I called a here, not theta, right, but the angle a is negative 7 pi over 6. And see it's in quadrant 4 here. And look at the, you know, the labeled coordinates in, in, in rectangular. See 2.598 and then negative 1.5. See, remember negative 3 halves, I said, negative 1.5 was the y coordinate. So 2.598 must be this 3 root 3 over 2 rounded to 3 decimal places. But yeah, so I'm putting in those exact values though. All right, so the x coordinate, 3 times the square root of 3, and get out of the square root there, divided by 2. And then the y coordinate, you know, negative 3 halves. And that should be good. Wonderful. All right, so that objective with the conversions is done. All right, now we're just locating points. All right, so here they give us, you know, remember I said earlier, every location has infinitely many polar coordinates. You know, you could use a positive R, you could use a negative R. And whatever angle you find, you know, you could always just keep adding 2 pi or keep subtracting 2 pi and you'll be back at the same location, right? You're traveling on a circle. So they're asking, you know, find the point plotted on the polar graph below. You know, which of the following is a correct set of two polar coordinates for that point? So look at this point here. First of all, how far is it from the pole? It is on this circle with a radius of 4. So 4, four could be used. Also, negative 4 could be used, which you see in all the options here. So I'm not really, I can't really pick one yet. Every single one of these has a radius of 4 or negative 4. Now, if I use 4, right, if I start at positive 4 and go counterclockwise, that'd be 4, and then, you know, counterclockwise, 5 pi over 6. So 4, 5 pi over 6 is good, but that's not up here. All right, I don't see positive 4 with positive 5 pi over 6. But remember I said it earlier, you could always keep adding 2 pi or subtracting 2 pi and get the same place. So 4, 5 pi over 6 works to get to that location. But I could also add 2 pi, right? Now 2 pi would be 12 pi over 6. So add, two, add 12 pi over 6 would be at 17 pi over 6. Now I'm not seeing any 17 pi over 6s down here. So instead of adding 2 pi, I could subtract 2 pi. You know, go 4 and then go 5 pi over 6, but then minus 2 pi, you know, go, remember when you decrease an angle, you're going clockwise. And that would be, you know, negative 7 pi over 6. So positive 4, you know, positive 4, negative 7 pi over 6 would take me to that same location. So it's going to be either the, fir one of the first two options, right? Those have positive 4, negative 7 pi over 6 as, uh, as coordinates. Now if I did negative 4, and if I started at negative 4, you, know, you could go clockwise just pi over 6. So negative pi over 6 would work with negative 4. If I started at negative 4 and went negative pi over 6, clockwise pi over 6, I'd land at that point. So that's the second option here. These two coordinates take me to the same location. Great. Right, now you could have also you know, gone through every single option here and see if you land at the right location. But that, that might take too long. All right, so another location of points here, same deal, where it's just here, which which options are good to get me here. So this is a point on a circle with a radius of 1. So you could use 1 for r, negative 1 for r. So you see all these have 1 and negative 1 for r. Now if I use 1 for r, you could do 0 for, for the angle and you know, not move at all, and you're right there. 
Or again, you could add 2 pi. So 1 comma 2 pi or, or subtract 2 pi, 1 comma negative 2 pi. So it's either the third or fourth option with the 1 negative 2 pi. Now if I use negative 1, you know, negative 1, 0 would put me on the left side of the circle here. So it has to be negative 1 pi, right? I need to add pi to get to the other side to get back to this location. So it's this last option with 1 negative 2 pi and negative 1 pi that take me to the same location. Great. All right, so that objective is done too. Moving on. All right, so now we're into equations. Polar equations, right? We did the first two objectives for defining polar coordinates, which I probably should have broken up to a separate video, but I thought this would take less time. My apologies. Well, anyway, let's just finish it off. Polar equations. I got these three objectives. So we're asked to convert equations between polar and rectangular form. All right, so polar equations are just like you know, when you're asked to graph a polar equation, it's just like graphing any other equation. But instead of x and y, you know, you got this r and theta to deal with. Our polar equations. So what we're doing with polar equations here, we're going to see r equals and then some function involving theta. And you can make a little table with you know my inputs with values of theta. Again, theta will be like the inputs and then values of r. And then, of course, if you want to make a third column, you know, the point that you're going to plot, you know, r comma theta. Now, you don't really need the third column if you just read it top to bottom here. Or if you put r on the bottom, put bottom to top, just r comma theta, plot these points. So you're going to, you can look at tables here and plot points and whatnot. Now, I'm just going to go, uh, I'll give you a very quick example. If I said, you know, r equals the sine of theta. Okay, so a quick example you know, before I get to the Desmos thing. Now if I said graph this in, in polar, right, so I'm over here, the vertical axis, and then remember the horizontal axis is that polar axis or radial axis r. And I start making a table for this, you know, putting in different values of theta, you know, maybe theta equals zero, well, the sine of zero is zero, and when r is zero, you know, we're at the pole. So this point, the pole, is on this graph. So that's the zero, zero. And any time r is zero, they're back here. Uh, I could plug in, say, pi over six. You know, and that's a nice angle. Now the sine of pi over six, remember, was a half. So I go to half, right, so we're going to do this. Here's a half on the r-axis. So we're traveling on this circle with a radius of a half. And I need to sweep out an angle of positive pi over 6. So from here, I'm on the circle, go up positive pi over 6. So again, it's not straight up. It's on a curve. It's on a circle. So from here, positive pi over 6, 30 degrees. Let's say that's about here. So there's a half pi over six. And then let's say I plug in a nice pi over three. And I pi over four. Pi over four. Remember sine of that is square root of two over two, which is about 0.7 something. So again, let's go a little closer to one here. So I go to r equals you know square root of two over two. And then we're on a circle with this radius centered at the pole, and I sweep out, you know, 45 degrees higher, so maybe about 
have to do again traveling on a circle maybe about here and this isn't going to be a great i'll show you this in desmos it'll be a lot nicer looking uh, then another nice angle would be pi over 3. Now the sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. All right, so I go to square root of 3 over 2, even closer to 1, that's about 0.86. Go to square root of 3 over 2 on the r-axis, travel on a circle, and I'm traveling, you know, 60 degrees on this circle. Again, eyeball it, maybe, maybe I'm about, about up here. This is, this is going to be curvier than I'm drawing. And then uh, you know, pi over 2, I remember the sine of pi over 2 is 1. So now I'm on this circle with a radius of 1 and going pi over 2 radians. So I'm starting here at 1, pi over 2 radians on this circle, I'm up here. All right. And then eventually, all right, I could plug in other points. Hopefully, you're going to eventually see all these points forming a circle in this graph anyway. Right, they're not always going to be circles, all right? But I get more points over here, blah, blah, blah. And I create this little circle. And when I'm back at 2 pi, right, this is when theta equals 2 pi, I'd be back at the origin. I'd be back at the pole. All right, so that's how you graph by hand if you wanted. You know, you'd plug in different values of theta, get different values of r. And usually, usually, theta from 0 to 2 pi will give you a complete graph. Again, usually. I'm not saying that's always happening, but... So like, let me show you in Desmos now. Get rid of that stuff, plotting points here. And so I still got the polar grid up, still in radians. If I go R equals, all right, so this is where theta is going to come in. All right. See that when I type theta earlier in my ordered pairs, you know, nothing happened. But when we type in you know R equals and then some function of theta, like the sine of theta that I had, you'd see in a circle like that. And in fact, zero to pi took me back to the to the origin here. Right. So there's a again the picture looks similar to what I had on my uh, on my drawing. Now we could also Eh, I'm not gonna do that. I don't want to plot a point. Alright, so we got polar curves. R equals, you know, some function of theta. Now, they're giving us R equals, you know, five cosine theta plus five sine theta. And we're asked to write this as an equation with rectangular coordinates, an equation in x and y. Now I'll put up what they have there. It's 5 cosine theta plus 5 sine theta. So I got the 5 sine theta already. 5 cosine theta plus, right? So, oh, not 5 plus, 5 times cosine theta. So 5 cosine theta plus 5 sine theta. Again, I'm just going to go 0 to 2 pi for all these. And you see that we get another little circle thing. Again, they're not always going to be circles. All right, please understand this. We'll see some some different ones later. Like if I just had straight up, right, r equals uh, the sine of 2 theta. Look at that. That's not a circle. All right, they, that's actually called, that's called a rose with four petals. All right, so just, just understand that they're not always going to be circles. All right. So I got this circle here. But again, they want us to convert to a rectangular form. And look at the left side here. They're already giving us a little hint. See how the left side is x squared plus y squared equals something? You may recall from earlier that x squared plus y squared was the same as r squared. All right, so I'll start with this equation up here, and we'll try to get r squared on the left so we can write what they're having. So r equals, you know, we got 5 cosine theta plus 5 sine theta. 
to get r squared over here, now you could square both sides, but that would make this side annoyingly larger than it was. Now I have to multiply it and foil and all that. And then there'd be cosine squareds and sine squareds, and I don't, I don't want all that. Instead, I'm just going to multiply both sides by r. That'll give me r squared over here. And then if I multiply everything by r, I'd have 5 times r times cosine theta plus and then 5 times r times sine theta. All right, just multiplying both sides by r. And now we can convert to rectangular. Remember, r squared, when I, I'll do r e c t, if I convert to rectangular, remember that's x squared plus y squared. And then you might recall also that r cosine theta was x. When I change to rectangular, this is 5x plus, and then same thing here, r sine theta was y in the y coordinate in rectangular. So this is what they want. There's your equation for the same curve in rectangular coordinates in x and y. Let me show you in Desmos, right? I'll type this equation is as is, and we'll see the same the same curve come up. So we have x squared plus y squared equals 5x plus 5y. And you see it's right on top of the other circle. There's the, pol there's the curve in polar coordinates. And then here's the curve, same exact curve, right on top of it in rectangular coordinates. So we're just putting in the other side, though, right? They have the x squared plus y squared already equals 5x plus, you know, 5y. Wonderful. So another one, we're asked to convert equations between polar and rectangular. Now this time, we're given rectangular xy and asked to write in polar form, and they want us to solve for r. See how they have r equals, and then we're going to have some function of theta, right? They want r in terms of theta, r of theta here. So no r is in this box, right? They have r equals and then something with just theta, no, no r at all. And I've already, uh, I've already kind of told you these relationships, you know, the, 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 all the relationships I wrote up between rectangular and polar, right? X squared plus Y squared is R squared. X is R cosine theta. Y is R sine theta. Tangent of theta is Y over X. All right, all that stuff I wrote up earlier will come into play when we're converting, you know, back and forth between these equation types. So 2X squared minus 2Y squared equals 3y. And I think it's a lot easier to go from rectangular to polar because all we need to do is everywhere there's an x, I replace it with r cosine theta. And everywhere there's a y, replace it with r sine theta. And of course, we can do some simplification when we're done. But over here, this when I square this, we'll have 2 r squared cosine squared. That's 2x squared minus and then 2y squared. Squaring the y would give me r squared sine squared. So 2r squared sine squared uh, equals and then 3r r sine theta. Sorry, that's r sine theta. Um, Okay, so something I'm noticing here, you don't have to do this, but both of these on the left side here have this 2r squared in common. And then what would be left over when I pull 2r squared out would be cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. That's the same thing as the cosine of 2 theta. Remember, cosine of 2 theta was equivalent to cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. 
And then we have equals, you know, three R sine theta. And I'll take everything, we're trying to solve for R here. I'm gonna take everything to one side. We got two R squared times cosine two theta minus three times R uh, times the sine of theta. And this is equal to zero. And then if I, uh, then these have a common factor of R. Now you could think of this as a quadratic in R. Use the quadratic formula, but that'd be kind of silly here. You can just factor an R out, right? Both of these have R in common. So I pull out R. That'd be R times two times R times cosine two theta minus three sine theta. And this equals zero. And remember when a product equals zero, you know, either R equals zero, but that's just the pole. Remember R equals zero is just, you know, this point here. It's just this point at the pole. So all that means is the pole will be on this graph, but that's not a very interesting graph, right? What's going to be more interesting is coming from the other factor. Now, if this is equal to zero, when we solve for r, right, I would add 3 sine theta divided by 2 cosine 2 theta. r equals 3 sine theta divided by 2 cosine 2 theta. And this is the function of theta they're talking about right here. I'm going to take that, set equals 0, solve for r. So again, r equals 0 is not interesting, right? The pole will be on this, right? When theta is 0, r will be 0. Okay, so the pole will be on this. That's indicated here, but it's also going to be on this, right? So we're going to have a graph going through the pole again. Let me show you. All right, so in Desmos, so again, I'll change up this, uh, I'll put in the rectangular coordinates that we were given, the rectangular equation we were given, it was this, it was 2x squared minus 2y squared equals 3y, right? So this hyperbola, and this is actually a hyperbola. And then r, I'm just gonna, when I solve for r, right, we got this, we got, 3 sine theta divided by 2 cosine of 2 theta. And let me turn this on, and you see it's the exact same curve when I let theta range you know, all the way around from 0 to 2 pi. So this is a, a correct function, a, a polar equation for the same curve. So that's what I'll type in here. Right? We got 3 times the sine of theta. Now, can I just, is there a theta? All right, so I'm gonna have to go here, trigonometry. No, probably the Greek letters, that would make more sense because theta is a Greek letter. So three sine theta, and then back in the box here, divided by two times the cosine of two theta. Now, if you didn't write cosine two theta, right, you would have two times the quantity cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta down here if you eventually did, you know, if you solve for r with the, without using the identity. Great. All right. All right, so remember what I was doing earlier with a table? I had r equals sine theta earlier, and I made a little table where you plug in values of theta, get values of r, and then you would plot points. Well, all they're doing here is having you, you know, plug in values of theta, get values of r, when you plot anything. All right, so for the polar equation, r equals, you know, 4 cosine theta, um, you know, plug in pi for theta, plug in 5 pi over 4 for theta, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. All right, well, I'm just going to do this. 4 cosine of pi. Cosine of pi, remember, was negative 1. So this would be negative 4. Cosine of 5 pi over 4 would be negative root 2 over 2. But then times 4 would be negative 2 root 2. So negative 2 times the square root of 2. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. So then times 4 would still be 0. And then the cosine of 2 pi is 1 times 4 would be 4. All right, so I'm just 
saying these out loud, right? Again, these should be things you know from the unit circle real quick, easy trig function here. So I would plot these points where r is negative 4, theta is pi, and where r is negative 2 root 2, and theta is pi over 4. And where r is... Now when r is 0, you're at the pole. So this is representing the pole here, you're at the pole. And then when r is 4, theta is 2 pi. All right. Great. And again, just plugging in values for theta, getting values for r, and then of course you would plot these points on the polar grid later. All right, symmetry. All right, so what type of symmetry does the graph of this polar equation have? All right, so there's the three kinds of symmetry they mention here. So I'll go over how do we check for these symmetries. And I'll also look at a graph, right? We'll put this up in Desmos and see if it has any symmetry as well. All right. So checking for certain kinds of symmetry in a polar graph. So the first one mentioned in the, those choices there is polar axis symmetry. Now remember the polar axis is that horizontal line here. Um, if you have polar axis symmetry, that means that if I go, you know, go to some value of r, sweep out an angle of theta, you know, maybe counterclockwise, that lands me at a point. Doing the opposite, sweeping out the opposite angle. So negative theta uh, takes me to a point that's exactly symmetrical on the other side. Like both of these points, you know, basically, uh, when r equals you know some function of theta. It's exactly the same as the value at negative theta. All right, so going theta, negative theta, I'm on the, I'm, 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 I've got the same graph. All right, so if I were to change the angles here, these points would just switch with each other, and the graph wouldn't change at all. All right, so it's pretty much like having an even function of theta. Remember, functions are even when you just take the opposite input, and you still get the same expression. Now, symmetry about the pole, right? Just symmetry about the pole. So remember, the pole is here when r equals 0. Now, symmetry about the pole is if I you know, have a point, again, with r theta here, if you were to go to, remember, go to the pole and go the same distance across, you land at another point on the graph. Well, this would be r theta, right, going clockwise, the counterclockwise theta. Over here would be negative r, and then the same theta, right? So if an equation has this pole symmetry, you know, replacing r, with you know the opposite of r doesn't change the curve if it has pole symmetry. And I guess I should have written that up here too with the polar if it has polar axis symmetry replacing theta with negative theta doesn't change the curve. You get the exact same graph. So there's that polar axis symmetry, pole sy symmetry about the pole, and then the last of these is symmetry about the line theta equals pi over 2. Now, 
theta equals pi over 2, right? Again, you got the polar axis is this horizontal number line. This vertical line that goes through the pole, this is the line where theta is always pi over 2. Right? You got 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2. You're always on this vertical line that runs through the pole. All right, so if we have symmetry about this line, that means if I have a point on the right side of it, you know, go the same distance across on the other side, you know, there's symmetry across it. We're at this point over here. Well, we have the same radius. All right, so we're on this circle with radius r. And then the angles, though. The angle to get to this point would be theta. And the angle on the other side, if I reflect it across this line, theta equals pi over 2, this angle is also theta. So if I want the angle from r, if I want to start from just r here, I would go pi and then minus theta to get back. All right, so we have here is another angle that's pi minus theta. So the coordinates here at this point on the one side would be r theta, and then the point on the other side, if it has that symmetry, would be r and then pi minus theta. So to check for this symmetry about this line, replace replace thetas with the quantity pi minus theta, and uh, you know, does it change the curve? So replacing theta with pi minus theta doesn't change the curve if you do have this symmetry. You're on the same graph still. Doesn't change curve. All right. All right. So let's look at uh. So again, look at the uh, so polar axis. Replace theta with negative theta. Check it out. Pole symmetry, replace r with minus r, or the opposite of r, and check it out. See if we get the same thing. And symmetry about this vertical axis, you know, this theta equals pi over 2 line, place theta with pi minus theta, and check out the, see if we get something equivalent. All right, All right so the equation we're given is the following, where we have r equals r of theta r equals negative 2 times, you know, cosine squared theta plus 2 cosine theta plus 6. Now, because all the expression over here depends on just cosine of theta, uh, you may recall that cosine was an even function, right? If I replace all the thetas with negative theta, nothing will change. So you see how r of negative theta here, if I replace theta with negative theta, it's negative 2 times, you know, cosine of negative theta squared plus 2 times the cosine of negative theta plus 6. But this is exactly the same as our original. So replacing theta with, you know, minus theta wouldn't change the curve at all. It ha it's going to have the polar axis symmetry. Above the polar axis will look exactly like the mirror image of below the polar axis, right? So watch, watch. We'll go to Desmos and hopefully see this uh, polar axis symmetry. Oh, sorry, I should have kept the r equals up there, but we, get, we had r equals negative 2 cosine squared of theta plus 2 cosine theta and then plus 6. And look at this. So this horizontal axis is the polar axis. You see how, see how the, the, the curve above the polar axis is just a reflection of the curve below the polar axis? All right, there's this polar axis symmetry going on here. Replacing theta with negative theta, the opposite of theta, doesn't change anything at all. So that's the first option here, polar axis symmetry.
I, I guess I caught something up here. You could replace r with negative r, but to see if the curve is symmetric about the pole, you could also replace theta with theta plus pi. Right, if you go back to my symmetry page, now if I keep the same theta, just replace r with negative r, that takes me to the other side of the pole, the other side of the circle. But they're also saying you could replace theta with theta plus pi, right? Theta plus pi would also take you to that point. Or theta with theta plus pi. And if you get the same curve, it's it's got this pole symmetry. All right, theta plus pi, theta minus pi, where it would take you to the other side as well. Yes. All right. Moving on. All right, so back to graphing polar equations. All right, so at what point is the maximum of the polar curve r equals you know, negative sine theta minus 2 located? So this asking for the maximum, at what point is the maximum of the polar curve r equals negative 6 sine theta minus 2 located? And then enter the ordered pair in exact form and expressed in polar coordinates. The value of theta should be in the interval from 0 to 2 pi. All right. So the maximum of the polar curve this is when a point is furthest away from the pole. All right, when a point is furthest away from the pole, the maximum distance from the pole. All right, so I'll write this up. And we'll look at a drawing of this too, a sketch in Desmos, or maybe I can, I'm not going to do a sketch by hand, that'll take too long. But r equals, you know, negative 6 times the sine of theta minus 2. And again, they're asking for maximum. Maximum is, you know, what point? And it could be point or points. Uh, there may be more than one maximum. Um, what point or points is farthest from the pole, has a maximum distance from the pole. All right, now you got to recall something about sines and cosines. Remember, the value of sine is always between negative 1 and 1, right? And this was for any value of theta. So the largest sine can get is 1. And the smallest it can get is negative 1. Same thing for cosine, right? I know cosine is not in this problem, but we'll probably see one later with cosine. Same thing for cosine. Remember, the cosine, the largest cosine gets is at 1. The smallest it gets is at negative 1. So when we want maximum, you know, whenever sine is 1, this will be negative 8. You know, r will be negative 8. You'd be 8 units away from the pole. And that'll be at the maximum, right? Here's our max for sine and max for cosine. All right, and it gets to negative, you know, when, when, when we have negative one, you know, it'll be six minus two, that'd be four. Um, that's only four units away from the pole when sine is negative one. So again, I'm using the, I'm using when is the sine maximized here? That'll maximize my value of r. That'll maximize the distance from the pole. All right, so we just got to think, you know, when is uh, when is the sine function going to be equal to one? Right, well, that's going to happen when theta equals, you know, pi over two, and uh, you know that's it. If you're going just zero to two pi, right? It's just at pi over two. That's that's when sine's one. So then when theta equals pi over 2, 
right, r, like I said, sine of power two is one, to be negative eight. So yeah, on the graph of this thing, we'd be at you know negative eight on the r axis. And from here, I'm going counterclockwise, pi over two. I'd be down here. That's eight units away. Here's eight, negative eight pi over two. But if you want to use a positive r, right, to say we're eight units away, if I did positive eight, I could do positive three pi over two instead. Or eight and then positive three pi over two instead. And I like that because it gives me a po I like having a positive r. You know, this is the standard version of a polar coordinate where the r is positive and the, and the value of theta is between zero and pi over two. And then let's look at the graph as well. I'll go to Desmos and show you this, uh, the graph of this thing, r equals negative six times the sine of theta, and then minus two. And you see how the point furthest away is down here, with which is eight units. You see this is five, and then six, seven, eight. You see how that's this point down here. And now, if I, I, I again, when I label points in Desmos, it's got to be rectangular. That would be at you know zero, negative eight. If I, you know, that's that point on the circle, the radius of eight. So I'm on this circle, the radius of eight. So I could have done eight, eight negative pi over two, or eight three pi over two. Again, I'm going to use eight three pi over two, or negative eight pi over two, right? Negative eight pi over two, whatever. But I'll use eight. 3 pi over 2 to get to this location, but that is clearly the maximum. It's the furthest point away from the pole. Right, so back here down, they want in parentheses order pair 8. For, I'm going to use 8 for r and then 3 pi over 2 uh, for the angle for theta. Takes me to that location that is the furthest away from the pole on that grid. Right, and see, they use negative 8 pi over 2. Same location. Yeah, see the point on the curve furthest away from the pole, maximum. All right, great. Uh, back to symmetry. All right, so once again, I'll write up this and see if we have any symmetry. Now, if I just punch this in to Desmos, right, we have r equals 6 theta plus three sine theta. Now six theta will just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger the larger I make theta. So this is gonna be a curve that's just getting further and further and further away from the pole if I make theta larger and larger, you'll see. All right. So r equals six theta. You see when I just have six theta, curve just keeps getting further and further and further away from the pole. And that was just from zero to 12 pi there. Um, get rid of this point. So r equals six theta, but then we had plus three sine theta. Plus three sine theta. But again, still like because of this six theta in front, this is a curve that as theta grows, will get further and further from the pole. Right? Almost like a spiral shape here. Now, does this have symmetry? Uh, it doesn't look, I mean, it looks, it looks nice, but if I were to take, you know, a point here and reflect it across the horizontal line, huh, so maybe it does, it looks like it does have, now if it had polar axis symmetry, like this point here, when I reflect across the polar axis would be about here. So, Seeing the symmetry there. Uh, 
So maybe if I did like this, negative 12, mm, okay, so see, I only had 0 to 12 pi, but if I do that, now there's nice polar axis symmetry. Uh, if there are again, if there are pol nah, if there are polar axis symmetry, this this piece of the curve here would be over here. We have another loop over here. But it does look like it's symmetrical about the midline, about theta equals pi over two. So let's let's do some uh, substitutions here. Oh, oh, sorry, paper. So we had r, r of theta, r equals six theta plus three sine theta. All right now, if I replace theta. With the opposite of theta, we'd have r of negative theta, you know, negative six theta, plus three times the sine of negative theta. Now you remember, sine is an odd function, so this is negative six theta. And then sine of negative theta is the opposite of the sine of theta, so minus minus three sine theta. And this is actually the opposite of R of theta. So look, look let's see, let, let me go back to Desmos here. And let me just go zero to uh, zero to two pi. <laughs> I gotta get this to be less cluttered looking. Let's just have theta range from zero to two pi. Um, and then if I were to replace theta, let's, let's just drop them. I'm just gonna copy and paste this. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Sorry. So I just changed the range from zero to two pi, so I'm not getting a crazy cluttered graph. I mean, again, this isn't everything. It's a big spiral getting further and further away from the pole. Now, uh, again, if I were to copy and paste this, go zero to two pi again, and replace thetas with, you know, negative theta. So it's definitely not the, not the same graph. All right, these are not the same picture. I mean, it looks cool, but so we don't we don't have the polar axis symmetry, all right? So uh, no no polar axis symmetry. So I want to check that pole symmetry. You can do one of two things. Remember, you could replace r with negative r and see if you get the same thing. Well, remember, we just said here the opposite of r. So I just multiply both sides by negative 1 here, you know, negative r of theta. Oh, sorry, I'm just replacing r with negative r. So I have negative r over here equals, you know, 6 theta plus 3 sine theta. And once again, we'd have r of theta would have to be equal to negative 6 theta minus 3 sine theta. So that's by both sides by negative 1, but that's not the same as r of, uh, as the original. Right? That's not the same as the original. Uh, or we could replace theta, remember, with theta plus pi. That would also take you to the other side of the pole. And I'll do that in Desmos, right? So if I replace all these thetas here, get rid of that, get rid of that, replace the theta with the quantity theta plus pi. 
and then sine of you know theta plus pi and look at that graph and you see it's not you know definitely doesn't look the same as the original graph and again because replacing theta with theta plus pi here is increasing this taking you further away from the pole so no uh no pole symmetry either right so no pole symmetry let's put sym and then that last replacement right to check for that symmetry about theta equals pi over two right remember replace theta with pi minus theta and i'll just do that in desmos right replace theta with pi minus theta and he, oh no all right so theta with pi minus theta and you're definitely seeing you know it's not the same curve that does match so it is the same curve for a bit here and remember if i if i take the original curve and just change the value of theta up so that we get some negatives in there negative 2 pi we do get the same curve i just had to change values of theta so this this does have that symmetry about the midline symmetry about theta equals pi over two the left half and right half are reflections of each other so i'm going to say it has symmetry about theta equals pi over two and great all right, and again, you look at the graph, and they probably show you the graph down here, I'm sure. All right. And you see it has the symmetry about the midline, right. like in our picture here. All right. Symmetry about the middle line, the thought theta equals pi over 2. Great. All right, so we saw something similar to this earlier, where I have a convert this equation to polar form, right? Solve for r, get r in terms of theta. So like that earlier problem, right? Anywhere there's an x in rectangular, you change it to r cosine theta. Anytime, anytime there's a y, change it to r sine theta. So we're given this equation, and very similar. All the all they changed here were the coefficients. We have we had a very similar problem earlier in the video, right? Four x squared minus four y squared equals uh, two y. And then when I change this to polar. We're going to have 4 times, you know, x is r cosine theta, so that's going to be r squared cosine squared theta minus, and then 4 times y is r sine theta, so that's r squared sine squared theta equals, and then 2 r sine theta, right, 2y. And then like early, now earlier, right, uh, we didn't have all these having the same a uh, uh, same factor of two, right? All the, I can divide everything by two here. Make this two, and then pull out two r squared. So we have two r squared times cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta over here equals, and then just r sine theta over here. And like I did earlier, right? Cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. I don't want to keep writing that. That's the same thing as the cosine of two theta. And then I take everything to one side, you know, 2r squared. We're trying to solve for r, so I'll take all the r terms to one side, you know, 2, 2r squared cosine 2 theta minus r sine theta, you know, equals 0. Factor out an r. They both have r in common. So r times 2r cosine 2 theta minus sine theta. And this is equal to zero. Now, of course, it's equal to zero when r equals zero. But again, that's just the pole. That's not interesting. All, right. All that's telling me is that the pole, you know, is going to be on this graph. What is interesting is when this is zero. 
Now, if you have this equal to zero and you're solving for r, you're going to get r equals, you know, sine theta. You would add sine theta and then divide by 2 cosine 2 theta. And here's a more interesting equation, right? And that'll have the same graph as our rectangular. And you can double check it on Desmos, right? Let's do that. Uh, so. Our rectangular equation was 4x squared minus 4y squared equals 2y, right? So some hyperbola thing, right? You see this hyperbola thing showing up? And then our polar equivalent to that, where right? we solve for r sine theta, r equals sine theta divided by 2 cosine 2 theta. And you see it's right on top of it. It's the same exact equivalent. Great, so that's what I'll enter here. R equals you know, sine of theta. Now again, I got to go to that Greek letter area in the calculator here, on the keyboard. So sine of theta, and then divided by two cosine of two theta. Or if you had, you know, you didn't do that, you could have two times the quantity cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, right? Same thing. Great. Right, so this time we're given r equals and asked to, you know, change r equals some function of theta. And we're asked to change the equation into rectangular coordinates, right? So get it with x and y, and then they want us to solve for y. So remember all those relationships, you know, you got uh, r sine theta is y, r cosine theta is x. If you have y over x, that's tangent theta. And I see how I can get a tangent theta involved here. Let's watch. So here we have our polar equation, r equals you know, 8 sine theta divided by 5 cosine squared theta. Now I can think of this as 8 fifths. Now this is sine over cosine times 1 over cosine. Now sine over cosine is tangent theta. And then again, times 1 over cosine. Now, I know that's secant theta, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by cosine theta, and we get this. R cosine theta equals, you know, 8 fifths times the tangent of theta. Right? These are the same equation, as long as the cosine of theta is not 0. Right? Um, and now I can change to rectangular using relationships we've seen throughout this video now. I see r times cosine theta, that's x in rectangular, equals 8 fifths. And then tangent of theta, remember, was y divided by x. So this is 8y, 8 fifths times y over x. I would multiply by 5x, divide by 8. You know, y equals 5 8 squared. And there's our rectangular equation when solved for y as a parabola. This will actually be the graph of a, of a parabola. And let's test this out. All right, let's just double check it. So my rect I'll put my rectangular equation here. Right, we said it was going to be y equals you know, 5 eighths x squared. All right, so you see this black uh, parabola shape showing up. Right, maybe I'll change the colors up. I think it's red. And then um, the equation they gave us was r in polar was r equals 8 sine theta over 5 cosine squared theta. And look, it's right, it's the same curve. So we are correct with our, our rectangular conversion here. y equals 5, 8, x squared. Great.
So graphing polar equations. All right, so they're asking us what kind of equation is this? Um, I'm just going to take you to the OpenStax text and show you the, the there's a little table in the section 7.3 of the OpenStax calculus volume two, where you see a table of all the generic, you know, pretty base all the all the basic polar curves you're going to come across. All right. So let me take you there. So here is section 7.3, polar coordinates in, again, the openstacks.org calculus volume 2 text. And if you scroll down far enough, you see this table with some common polar curves and the way they, the equations look. Now, if you have th just theta equals a constant, right? We saw theta equals pi over two as a ver that vertical line going through the pole. And the theta equals some constant is gonna be just some line going through the pole. And then R equals, you know, A cosine theta plus B sine theta. It's gonna be some circle where A and B are real numbers. We saw a spiral earlier, right? Yeah, R equals some constant A plus some constant B times theta. Uh, a cardioid, right? Something that's like a heart shape. Well, it's like a circle with a, a point, a sharp divot in it, a sharp dent. You have R equals some constant A times one plus cosine theta, the quantity one minus cosine theta, one plus sine theta, one minus sine theta. So it's really just a plus a cosine or sine theta, where a can be any constant. Uh, then a thing called a limaçon is like a cardioid, but where the constants are different. So you have instead of a plus a cosine theta or a plus a sine theta, it's b plus a cosine theta, b plus a sine theta. So when a and b are different, you get something called a limaçon. And then when you have some number times cosine of not just theta, but see b theta, like two theta, three theta, four theta, five theta, you get these things called roses with so many petals. They look more like daisies to me, but they're flowery. Right. So again, they, so they, uh, they explain the some just some of these basic polar curves. Not all of them, obviously. There's not all possibilities. Yeah, so back in the assignment here, r sine of 5 theta, that's one of these roses, right? That's it's like this down here. So it's 1 sine 5 theta. And I'll show you in Desmos too, right? You'll see this rose with five petals shape, r equal, you know, just a sine of 5 theta. And you see this rows with five petals. And what you'll notice if you do more and more of these is that if you have an odd number in front of theta, that's how many petals you will see. And if you have an even number in front of theta, you'll see double that many petals, right? So there's sine of five theta. Sine of two theta will have four petals. Three will have three. Four will have eight. Five will have five, as you saw. Six will have twelve petals, right, and, and so on. But yeah, so this is a one of those roses. Let me show you the graph here. Let you play around with it. All right. All right. So here are another graph one. So which of the following correctly graphs the points shown in the table below? Okay. All right, so they give us a bunch of points. And we have to multiple choice this. You know, which which of these curves, which well, which of these grids has the correct points on it? All right, so let's just go one at a time here. You know, r equals -3 and then theta is 0. So that'd be three to the left of the pole and then nowhere nowhere else. So this has negative two zero, so that's not it. 
Uh, this has negative three zero, it looks like. Yeah. So maybe this one. Not that one. There's no negative three zero, and uh, not this one either. So the only one. So I'm done. The only one that has negative three zero on it is this, and you can check the other points if you want. But we got lucky. This first point was only on this second graph and not on any of the others. Wonderful. So here we're asked to convert the equation to rectangular coordinates and use Desmos to sketch its graph. All right, so we're going to be, looks like we're going to get a graph of a line here. So again, remember the, remember the, the relationships between y and x and r and theta. So we got, here's our polar equation. So four, right, the polar equation is four theta equals, sorry, this is getting a little faint. Let me throw that out. Equals negative 25 pi. Now, if you solve this for theta, theta will be equal to you know, negative 25 pi over 4. Notice there's no r in this. This is just theta equals a constant. And as I showed you a second ago, right, in that table from the section, when theta is a constant, the graph is a straight line, where every single point has that value of theta as its theta coordinate. All right. But, you know, let's change this to uh, rectangular. Now, if theta is this, right, if we want rectangular to be involved, we do the tangent of theta. Remember, the tangent of theta was y over x. That'll help me convert to y and x, no problem. So I take the tangent of both sides. Right, the tangent of theta would be equal to the tangent of negative 25 pi over 4. which is, you know, now negative 24 pi over 4. That'd be negative 6 pi. That'd be three times around. And then you have negative, one more negative pi over 4. So this is the same as the tangent of negative pi over 4, you know, which is in quadrant 4. This is negative 1. So I have y over x. When I convert to rectangular, Tangent of theta is y over x, and then this tangent of negative 25 pi over 4 is, uh, is negative 1. So the graph, the line that we're, this is, is, is y equals negative x. y equals negative x, which has very easy points to plot. You know, you'd have the origin on it. And, uh, you know, where am I supposed to move this point? All right, well, you know what? I'll move this to the origin, and then this so that you're at y equals negative x. You know, y is the opposite of the x coordinate. There you go. There's the line y equals negative x, which would be the same as this 4 theta equals negative 25 pi in polar. Great. All right, so another graph in polar. But here we're given an equation in rectangular, you know, x equals negative 1. To convert this to polar form, use uh, Desmos to sketch its graph, and solve the resulting equation for r. Uh, now, now, x equals negative 1 is a vertical line, right, where the x coordinate's always negative one. So I'm gonna move one of these so you're at negative one, or one, you know, there, that, that's one to the left of the origin, and then just move this so it's a vertical line, okay? So there's x equals negative one. Now, if I wanted to write up, you know, the equation in polar, right, I know I've got the graph already, right? x equals negative one is no problem, so it's a vertical line. But, you know, when x equals negative 1, that's in rectangular. If I'm converting to polar, remember x is r cosine theta. 
Now I'm in polar. And when I solve for r, right, r would be equal to negative, you know, 1 over cosine theta. That's negative secant theta, right? 1 over cosine was secant. And there you go. And I'll show you. Right, we'll, uh, we'll look at Desmos and see that those match. So here's r equals, you know, negative secant theta. You should see a vertical line. And it's the same as x equals negative 1. You see how this is right on top of that line there. Beautiful. Yeah, that's all I wanted was the graph in it, though. All right, so the graphing is done. Got one more objective to complete. Identify the symmetry. All right, so this one is incredibly similar to the one we saw earlier. With the, It had 6 theta, I think, minus... Uh, it was 6 theta plus 3 sine theta. So I'm going to guess that this has the pi over 2 symmetry again. Now let's take a look at it. 2 theta minus 5 sine theta. 2 theta minus 5 sine theta. And just like last time, I'm going to go from negative. Let's do negative. Uh, going to 12 pi there. How about negative 12 pi to 12 pi? And you, you can see that it's definitely symmetrical about the middle line. You know, it's got, if I, if I took the left half and reflected it across the line, theta equals pi over 2, I'd get the right half. So without really doing any too much checking here, um, without doing any substitutions, I'm just going to say, hey, this is very similar to a, a problem I saw earlier. Theta equals pi over 2. That's that line of symmetry. And they go through the whole spiel of how you check right, what replacements to make and all that uh, to see if you got the same kind of symmetry. All right. And they show you the graph here. Right. It clearly has symmetry about the vertical axis. All right. Um, and this is incredibly similar. This is just different coefficients. You know, if I put minus 7 theta, minus 5 sine theta, let's look. So I still got the same, you know, it's negative 7 theta. And again, you're seeing, it's the same kind of graph. You're seeing this symmetry about the middle line. The left half and right half are mirror images. So once again, I'm not going to do any work here. Just know it's so similar to the previous problems. It's going to have theta equals pi over 2 as a line of symmetry. Okay, cool, and that looks like it. So hopefully you're seeing stuff like this. Uh, maybe you'll come across ones with pole symmetry or polar axis symmetry or even none of the above. You know, I would take a look at it in Desmos, though. You know, keep varying the values of theta. Look at large. You know, look look at the graph. Does it have axis with the hor you know does it have symmetry with the horizontal axis? Then it has that polar axis symmetry. Uh, does it have symmetry with the vertical axis? Then it has that theta equals pi over two symmetry. And if it looks like it's an odd function, if you remember odd functions, uh, that would have that pole symmetry. If I reflect through the pole, you know, get the same graph again, it would have that pole symmetry. And okay, and that should be it. Wonderful. So that's it for this preview version of section 7.3. As I said at the top of the video, you may see some different problems than I'm seeing when you work on the assignment yourself. But I'm hoping that they are similar enough here so that, you know, watching me do them helps you in some way when you go to work on them on your own. And thank you very much for watching.